Yeah. So Sri Lanka, um, uh, from an IT industry, if you look at it, uh, it's actually a, a pretty, it's a pretty small, small place, right? Um, of a population of about 21 people. Uh, but if you look at the number of people in, in, in information technology, it's uh, less than uh, 100,000, right? And if you look at the number of graduates that are coming out every year, it's about, uh, you know, less than 2,000 every year. In comparison, if you look at our neighbors, uh, India specifically, the numbers are much bigger, right? So, um, and also if you look at the landscape of uh, Sri Lanka in the IT industry, still we have a good 90% of our uh, uh, work services based. Uh, and, and a shift that I am, I am very strongly believing is that um, the industry should shift from services to true product engineering. Um, and the great thing is there are some good success, uh, successful companies that have been able to do that and, and uh, create significant value in being able to move to product engineering. Um, Cake Labs is the engineering organization of Cake and um, that's exactly uh, what we've been able to uh, do. Um, if you look at our uh, revenue in terms of export in the IT industry, um, currently I believe it's in the 600-700 million range, but by moving into product engineering and building some amazing products that can be used in global markets, we can really uh, fast track that uh, uh, revenue coming into our, our, com uh, our country, specifically because um, in product engineering, your revenue and your valuations are not tied to the number of people you have. It, it's tied purely onto the, the business value and the value of that uh, product that you are building. Uh, to add to that, a, a, a good example of a country that Sri Lanka should really follow is uh, Israel. They have a population of about 7.1 million uh, people. Uh, but if you look at the, uh, the type of work they do, they have about 200,000 people in the IT industry, um, uh, more than double our, our, our size. Uh, but they have the highest number of NASDAQ listings outside the United States, right? And they're building some amazing products uh, that are creating significant value um, uh, globally, right? Um, and if you look at their value in terms of um, uh, dollar revenue, in that uh, export market, it's something in the four billion dollar range, right? Again, uh, to my earlier point, um, it's not in relation to the number of people; it's really in relation to the uh, the value of the product um, and and product engineering capabilities. Uh, an, an amazing model that uh, Sri Lanka can uh, follow. So, if you look at true Silicon Valley companies, what they're really specializing in is building disruptive uh, technologies and di disruptive innovation, right? Uh, and if you look at what we're doing at uh, Cake, um, uh, our company's Cake, uh, what we're building is a, 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 a very disruptive technology. It's a restaurant technology platform um, for the restaurant industry, right? And it uh, it has the entire uh, spectrum from uh, finding a restaurant, getting a booking into a restaurant. Uh, making a reservation, coming into the restaurant, the restaurant operations, payments, uh, loyalty, and uh, marketing such that you know you get that consumer back into the restaurant. An entire full cycle uh, restaurant technology platform, right? Um, but uh, building a disruptive product, a Silicon Valley company, uh, is not easy, and uh, you need to have a real, true, very a uh, strong engineering organization, a, a true Silicon Valley engineering organization. And I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, uh, we have been able to replicate that uh, here with about 90% of our engineering team be based in Sri Lanka, the balance being in, in, in the Silicon Valley um, uh, as well as our office in um, Austin. So what does it really mean to be a true Silicon Valley engineering organization? Number one, you have to be building a disruptive product, uh, a product that can potentially change an industry. Smart people join companies like, like that because of the potential of uh, doing something significant, right? Uh, number two, you have to have a, 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 a very uh, innovative, creative culture within your organization that allows people to experiment, try new things, and fail fast, right? Number three, you have to be changing every day. You should be changing technology, processes, uh, frameworks, um, uh, methodologies uh, in a, um, a frequent manner 
in line with what's happening in the uh, the industry as you know technology changes you need to be uh, working in line uh, very closely with them and finally you have to be uh, based in the silicon valley silicon valley at the end of the day is the mecca of technology innovation you have to have a presence there and you have to have a very strong um, uh, program that allows you to um, share the knowledge of learning that happens in the Silicon Valley with the rest of the organization and, and that's something that uh, we have in our teams. So the fundamental difference between uh, incremental innovation and disruptive innovation is that in incremental innovation you're actually potentially improving on an existing business process, right? So for example, you may be uh, introducing an uh, invoicing mechanism, an uh, electronic invoicing mechanism uh, in your company such that you can get your invoices out faster and in a much more efficient manner with much more data, right? You see a lot of incremental innovation happening across, across the board. This is also very important. Disruptive innovation on the other hand is when you build a product or technology that potentially changes an entire industry, right? Um, to give you an example, let's, let, let's look at a, a company like Netflix, which does online um, uh, video uh, streaming. Uh, they came and changed an entire industry, right? Uh, Blockbuster has been a company that has been doing uh, DVD rentals for decades. Uh, I, I, I grew up um, uh, what, you know, renting from companies like that. Uh, but what Netflix came and did was in, with using technology and technology adoption by uh, consumers, they were able to actually change that entire industry. Blockbuster is no more, they, they, they file for bankruptcy, but Net, Netflix is uh, doing amazingly well as a company. They are growing uh, as a company in user base, but they are also now producing their own uh, films and, and um, they are uh, integrating vertically, right? So that's the real power of uh, disruptive innovation. So uh, our business is really about restaurants, right? Um, and the making the lives of uh, restaurant owners uh, easy. So uh, in, in uh, very uh, easy terms, cake makes uh, it simple, right? Um, um, to that effect, we have what we have built is a technology platform for restaurants that goes end to end. The entire spectrum so a merchant has to only deal with one vendor and a consumer also has uh, to only deal with uh, one vendor all the way from finding a restaurant making a reservation uh, coming into the restaurant restaurant operations payments uh, uh, loyalty and marketing right um, the um, one of our key success drivers is that uh, technology innovation uh, te technology adoption is uh, growing at a rapid pace. People are getting access to internet, people are getting access to smartphones, uh, people are uh, able to adapt to all these technologies very, very fast, right? Um, and technology is also uh, changing all the time. So uh, one of the uh, key things that we need to be always on top of is uh, technology innovation um, and being able to change as, a, as an organization uh, very fast. As a disruptive Silicon Valley company, uh, technology innovation and the adoption is really really important um, and to do this we need to hire very very smart people uh, and we have to continuously evolve right um, and if you look at the, some of the ways we have implemented this uh, number one we have a very strong relationship with some of the top universities in Sri Lanka um, Columbia University, Maruti University, SLIIT and so on we have invested in uh, labs at some of these uh, institutions. This allows us to attract some of the best of the best uh, engineers from these uh, universities, as well as influence the type of work they do in line with what happens in the in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we also have a very uh, uh, strong collaboration with our teams uh, in Silicon Valley and Austin, where. At any given time, we will have team members from Sri Lanka spending time in the Silicon Valley working on our products, technologies, as well as understanding what's happening in, in the Silicon Valley uh, with other tech companies that they can uh, embrace and uh, provide value to back to our organization. So that program is very strong. At the, at the same time, we have teams from uh, our US officers coming and spending a lot of time uh, in, uh, in Sri Lanka for, for that technology um, uh, simulation, right? Um, uh, and finally, uh, another thing that's very important that we have done is we have uh, what we created small 
uh, teams, uh, we call them pods. Maximum size of our team is about six to eight uh, team members. And we follow uh, Jeff Bezos rule uh, of uh, uh, you know two pizzas to be able to should be able to feed the entire team. If not, the team is too large, right? And that's a very uh, prominent uh, model even in the Silicon Valley. So we have very small entrepreneurial teams, and and we give them a lot of uh, uh, ownership and uh, uh, space to be very creative, be be very uh, innovative. Um, and this is a very similar to a startup. If you if you look at it, a startup is what they consider the, uh, one of the most efficient organizations because. Uh, the team is small, you make decisions really uh, fast uh, and everybody is potentially seated uh, uh, around the table and doing doing stuff and getting stuff done, right? Uh, there are no hierarchies, you make decisions fast and move on. That's the same culture that we're trying, we are trying to uh, inculcate uh, within our organization um, at Cake Labs, uh, the small uh, team culture and we have uh, uh, called in pods and we have 21 uh, pods that allow us to uh, do this.